Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the Genomics Bootcamp. This time is a follow-up or an add-on to the previous video, how to measure linkage disequilibrium. This video is entitled Advanced because we have a bit more equations here as on the average of the channel. The reason I did not include these ones into the previous video is that perhaps not everybody is interested or they don't like to see you know, too many equations in a educational video. Therefore, I thought it makes sense to divide the two, but you are here, you are interested, so let's get to it. I repeat here a few slides that were in the original video in order to provide context, but we will go through these ones in a quicker manner. We start with this video where we ended last time, and this is our prior knowledge now, and the most important part is the R square, so there we have the commonly used robust measure of LD. In the previous video, I was just including the summary equation, but in this video, we will have more information how we arrive to this R square. So again, we have the correlation coefficient from a general statistics and abbreviated as a lowercase r, ranges from minus one to one, and there are various values of a correlation coefficients that are expressing the relationships between the two variables x and y. Of course, the correlation coefficient is also computed somehow, and it is actually computed as a covariance between x and y divided by the square root of variance x and variance y. If we want to write out this one in a further detail, so we have this would be the covariance between x and y and the variance of x and the variance of y in these brackets. Basically, the goal of this video is to provide you with the link between this equation and the r square equation to compute the linkage disequilibrium that was shown at the end of the last video and also will be shown more times also in this one. So for refreshment, we have the R square value that is the squared correlation between the markers, therefore ranges between zero and one. And the value of one implies that the markers provide exactly the same information while the value of zero for the R square implies that the markers are not connected at all to each other. Therefore, it measures the loss of efficiency when a marker A is replaced by a marker B. The R square itself could be computed based on the allele frequencies from a, this uh, two by two table. So we have a locus A and a locus B and each of them has two alleles, capital B and a small b and a capital A and a small a. So these values are valid for a bialallelic system. So these kind of computations are valid only in a case that the markers have uh, two alleles. But because the SNPs on the SNP chips are biallelic by design, then we are good to go. There are in fact only three values that we need. That is the joint occurrence of A and B and the respective frequencies of capital A and capital B. Now we have the R square, which is the measure of the linkage disequilibrium and that can be computed with this equation. Previously, it was stated that the correlation itself, so the R could be computed with this equation. So basically the main question of this video is how to get from this to this. Now to answer this question, we have to reformulate our example a little bit. And we consider two loci A and B again on one gamete, but each with a possible random realization. We give the value of one to locus A with the probability of P capital A and the value of zero with the probability of P one minus P capital A. So this is basically the other allele. So this is the P A and P capital A. And then this is the P lowercase A, but because P lowercase A and capital A equal to one, so the sum of them is equal to one. So then the P lowercase A could be expressed as one minus capital A. The very same thing happens with the locus B. So we assign a value of one with the probability of P capital B and the value of zero with the probability of one minus P capital B. So this is a very particular example that we will follow up on in detail in the next video, but still I thought it's 
useful to show it here. So perhaps it's easy some understanding. So basically what we have a two loci here, locus one and locus two. So we have a allele's capital A, a lowercase a, and for locus two, it's a allele capital B and lowercase b. And basically what we do is we replace with the capital A with the ones and the lowercase a is with the zeros. So then it looks like this. So basically we just count how many capital A's we have. So that would be a five and how many capital B we have, that would be a six. And the joint occurrence of capital A and capital B would be four in this particular example. Now, of course, we are interested in, in a general example. So we introduce a population size of N and we can compute the proportion of the allele A as the sum of occurrence of allele A divided by the population size N. The same way we can compute the proportion of B with the sum of the allele capital B divided by the population size N and the joint occurrence of A and B, we can compute when the jointly occurring A and B together divided by the population size N. Okay, then the follow-up is what is the correlation between the realizations of zero and one of a random variable at the two loci? And here comes again the equation for the correlation coefficient so that is the R. This equation basically has three parts. So that is one in this top and then the, so basically the covariance and the variance of X and the variance of Y. And basically we have all these parts figured out already in the previous slide as shown here. So it can be replaced by N times the joint occurrence of A and B and the sum X can be replaced by N times the proportion of A and the Y could be replaced as the N times proportion of B. And similarly, all the other parts could be replaced and then in some cases also adjusted. So we end up with such a beautiful and much more simple equations. To provide you a link to the next slide, I also color code them. So basically we have this orange, the green and the blue part, which we then put back to the original correlation coefficient equation. So this is the top part here is the correlation coefficient. And then we put in the orange, the green and the blue part. And then you see here that the N is present all the way. So it can be actually removed from the equation and then only this part remains. So this part is basically the simple correlation between two loci one and two containing the alleles A and B. And if we square that equation because we are interested in R square rather than a simple R, so then we have this correlation or a squared correlation coefficient. That is the measure of the linkage disequilibrium as we have shown in the previous video and also in this one. So for the summary, the R square is a commonly used and robust measure of LD and the computation of the R square is adapted based on the equation for the correlation coefficient and for the allele and genotype frequencies. In reality, of course, we talk about computation of linkage disequilibria between a large number of markers or marker pairs. So we use software for it, for example, Plink or other software. And also in the follow-up videos, we will actually show how it is done using the Plink itself. For today, I thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest also in this advanced content. And I wish you a very nice continuation of the day.